So Maxwell was all like, hey guys, I think that the speed of light is really fast. I think it's like, well, because he had these constants from electricity and magnetism, I think it's three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And Fizeau, this amazing French physicist who did all kinds of cool things, including some really, really seminal work on capacitors, <clears throat> in 1850 was sitting around by the fire reading, um, he was reading Maxwell's work, and he says, well, let's figure out exactly how fast light goes. Now, think about that. How the heck are you going to find out how fast light goes if somebody just told you they think it goes 300 million meters in a second? That means it's going well more than all the way around the world within one second. That's going to be a pretty tricky thing to measure. So it's 1850, and here's what he does. He takes a mirror, and it's only like semi-glazed mirror. This is a pretty typical thing that we used in physics. It's a semi-reflective mirror, and that means that some light can get through it, and some light will be bent off of it. So that mirror is sitting right there, and he's going to take that. Well, here, look at this. There's a semi-reflective mirror. Okay. He takes it, he ripped it off of a car, just kidding. And, uh, and then there's light here. So he has this laser pointer, or maybe it wasn't a laser pointer because it was 1850. It probably wasn't even a light bulb. It was a candle or a lantern in 1850. And the laser light, anyway, comes out here and it goes pew, and some of it reflects off of here, but we don't care about that. But what, what I'm concerned about is that some of it goes through and passes through this devious device. And the device was like, it was like, uh, well, let me kind of draw it for you. It's like this circle, but it wasn't a complete circle. It had these notches in it, which had little holes in them. And let's say that it had 20 holes in it. I don't know, something like that. And uh, it looked like this. So this guy, if you spin it, enables light to get through sometimes. And if I spin it fast enough, you can kind of see through it. Let's see that. Can you kind of see through that? Probably not, because it's kind of dark, but I can, and I can see through it sometimes. Now, the beautiful thing is, <clears throat> the laser beam would only get through this sucker sometimes. So let's say the laser beam made it through. But the problem is, the laser beam's gonna hit another mirror. This is a high quality mirror. And the only way that laser beam can make it back, whoosh, the only way the laser beam can come back is if it happens to pass through another one of the slits. Because by the time that first slit, let, let's bit uh, a big distance here. Let's make this a long way away. All right, cool. The only way the laser beam can make it back is if it comes through the next, or maybe the second next, or third next of those slots. And if this distance is, I don't know, uh, rooms or a kilometer or something, then you'll be able to see, oh, where's the eye of physics going to be in this problem? Let's make a, a blue eye of physics up here. And we'll say that this is our observer who's watching the experiment with some nice eyelashes. And you want to know if you're going to see the light. So you're beginning to see the light. It was going this way, and it comes back only at exactly the right frequency of spinning this disk. See, if you're spinning it too slowly, then you'd be blocked by, I don't know, this one or that one or that one. And so you spin it really, really, really fast so that it exactly, it exactly goes through one slit and then comes back through the next. And if you're spinning too fast, then it'll be blocked by this, this little paddle right here. If you're spinning it too slowly, it could be in any one of those. But he spun it at his maximum possible speed, and he calculated with his distance, and he found, yep, that's the speed of light. Pretty ingenious experiment, if you ask me. He had, uh, he had gears, and he knew very well how precisely he was rotating the sucker, and he managed to get the speed of light to some very good accuracy, backing up Maxwell's observations of just a few years previous. What, what? His name is inscribed in the Eiffel Tower. Hi, France. Good work. Beautiful tower. Excellent guy named Fizeau. And you should go to France if you have the chance because it's really cool. Goodbye.